Our country wasn't founded on the right of happiness, but rather the right to pursue happiness. That right is what makes America the greatest nation the world has ever known. John Rich and Jimmy John. Bust me up. Jimmy John. Hey folks, I'm John Rich and welcome to The Pursuit. Can the American dream be pulled right out of thin air and made into a reality? The answer is yes. Jimmy John Leoto comes from a long line of military vets, so it was expected of him to fall in line and do as his family had done. But what was in the cards for Jimmy was nothing short of an unexpected hard right turn into the world of business. In 1983, he opened Jimmy John's Gourmet Sandwiches inside of a converted garage in Illinois. Then he grew that business to a literal empire of restaurants that franchised into more than 2,800 locations nationwide. On top of that, he was employing over 100,000 American workers. How is this even possible? This is one of the best hard work pays off American dream chaser stories you will ever hear, folks. Here's my buddy, Jimmy John. Jimmy John, welcome to the house. Thanks, John. So great to have you, man. Great to be here. I thought here. we should start with a cultural exchange of gifts since you are new to Nashville. Uh, maybe some Redneck Riviera whiskey. And a box of Jimmy John hey, subs. Hey, let's make the swap. <laughs> there you go. You buddy. got the drink, I got the food, man. So cool. There hey, there we go. All right. Thanks, buddy. Welcome to Nashville, man. Appreciate that. So growing up up there, you know, reading about your story, you know, I was struck that there was so such patriotism in your family. You know, a lot of men served uh, in the armed forces. You grew up around that, right? Well, my father served. My father fought the Korean War, and my older brother Greg was, uh, he drove an armored personnel carrier. My little brother Robbie was a ranger. Right. And um, and my father uh, was just a big believer in, in serving, and and, uh, and so he just assumed out of high school that I would serve as well. That's a lot to be expected of someone, of a kid. You see the brothers, you see dad, you know how that all went, and they're kind of like, that's kind of what we do around here. And you're thinking to yourself, I don't know if I'm cut out for the military. Do you think you would have been cut out for the military if you'd have gone in? There's no way. There's how many push-ups, you know? I no, mean, what listen, would that have been like? Push-ups, sit-ups, whatever, <laughs> but but I'm just not a fighter. I just, every time I ever got in a fight, I, I got I got beat up. <laughs> and, uh, and my brothers were real, real badasses, and my dad was too, and they all loved to fight. Mm -hmm. And the last thing in the world I want to do is go sign up to fight for two years. You right, know? I think people see a guy like Jimmy John. We all know that restaurant. We've all... We've all ordered food from there. Yeah. And I think, I think you know, everyday Americans go, oh, yeah, whoever Jimmy John is, that's a rich guy. And that's really all they think is, that, oh, he, he's a rich guy because I see it everywhere. And go back into school, you would think, oh, I bet, you know, Jimmy John probably made straight A's and Jimmy John probably, his parents were probably rich and who knows whatever else this guy had a leg up on. That was not the case for you. No. Not at all. No. I just had a tough childhood. My dad was bankrupt twice. You know, we, we drank powdered milk, and powdered milk sucks, and I never wanted to drink powdered milk again. So high school, John, was, uh, I graduated second to last in my class, and, and I was a freshman in high school, and I remember the, the uh, it was about mid-freshman year, and they wanted to kick me out of school. And I spent a lot of time with the disciplinary dean, Jim Lyons, and so... Oh, you he, remember his name? I remember his name. Well, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a better story there, because now the, the, now the upper school at my high school is called the Leoto Lyons Upper School, because I gave him a bunch of money, and they wanted to name it after me. I said, no, I got to bring Jim Lyons. Oh, that's it's, awesome, man. We, we've remained lifetime friends. But, wow. Uh, when they wanted to kick me out, Jim actually went to bat for me, and he said, he said, if you're going to kick Jimmy out, he said, I'm leaving. And he said, but if you let him stay, I'm going to look out for him, and I'm going to get him through school. And, and much to their chagrin, they agreed, and I had to report to Jim Lyons, and he, he kind of walked me through the entire, the entire journey of high school. I made it. I didn't do great, but I made right. it. And, uh, well, why, why do you think he felt such, such loyalty and conviction about you when other people didn't? You know, we, we made it. We had a connection. And he, we had good chemistry, and, and my household was pretty tumultuous when I was a kid. We had a lot of love in our household, but my dad was gone, and my mom could only do so much mm -hmm. with four kids that were all 11 months apart. You know, that's right. a, that's a, that, that's a big job. Yeah. So Jim and I just had a chemistry and a connection, and I would listen to him when he talked to me. You know, he, you know, he would give me things that I could do. He just got me. Mm -hmm. I mean, and and to give you an idea how he got me, we're lifelong friends. I mean, we're neighbors down in Key Largo, Florida, and yeah. and there's a reason for that. I hear and I 
I think this is true. You can confirm it if you want, if it's true, that you're, you were dyslexic. Yeah. So on top of everything else, yeah. you had trouble making words make sense in school, correct? Yeah, I can't read and comprehend. I can close my eyes and listen, so not now you get books on tape, right? Or yeah. you can hear it digitally, so I can do it now, but I, I cannot read and comprehend. So like like even, even at Jimmy John's, I, you know, I built it to almost a $3 billion business before I sold it. Yeah. Everything had to be on a single sheet of paper, opening sentence, you know, two or three supporting paragraphs, and a conclusion, and that's it. If it wasn't on one sheet of paper, so that's, you know. So that's why those flyers look like they looked? Probably. Because it's all big. It's like three words, four words, two words. Yes. The flyer I saw, I've, uh, no no pits. No, no grease, no fries, no Dale bread, no zits, no pits. Great subs instead. Jimmy John's, we deliver. It's one of our first ads. So simple.